Hi, I'm Joan Kang Shin. Welcome to Our World's Professional Development Program. These videos will help teachers improve their classroom practice and help their students to get the most out of Our World. This video is about using games to teach English. Children love playing games. Games are both active and interactive and can motivate children to learn new language free of stress. Teachers love to use games because they provide a meaningful context for language use and keep young learners attention in class. Games have the added benefits of being learner-centered, integrating different language skills, encouraging creative and spontaneous use of language, and helping to create a cooperative learning environment. Games also appeal to different learning styles like visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, and always appeal to children's sense of fun. The Our World program incorporates games as an important part of language learning. Our World has an abundance of games to choose from in the student books, video program, IWB, or classroom presentation tool. The games for each unit are available on CD-ROM or the website. Let's take a look at some helpful tips for choosing games and using them to teach English to young learners. First, be sure to choose games that connect to language learning. Although you want your students to have fun, you should also make sure the game has a purpose for learning language. When you prepare your lesson plan, ask yourself questions about the language to make sure you aren't using games as just a fun way to pass the time in class. In general, again, children learn by playing, by experimenting. So if you get that into your class, it's going to be easier for them to remember what you're teaching. And what kind of games? Any kind of games. It's important for the teacher to analyze uh, what kind of game. Game for the sake of game is not uh, uh, relevant, it's not recommended. The game has to fit the grammar point, not the grammar point fitting the game. Ask yourself, what language does the game target? Does it check comprehension of vocabulary? Does it practice a grammatical structure? In our world, Every unit has a game that allows students to practice the vocabulary and grammar. These games are designed to reinforce student learning and encourage communication. There are board games, guessing games, and games that use spinners, cubes, and cards. Let's take a look at one game in Level 3 in the unit What's for Dinner? In this board game, students cut out pictures of different foods, which include the vocabulary for the unit, such as bowl of sugar, loaf of bread, bunch of bananas, etc. Then they place them on the board, making sure their partner doesn't see where. Students ask and answer questions following the grammar point of the lesson. Using this question and answer pattern, Students try to find the location of pictures on their partner's board. Notice there is a model of the expected dialogue for the students to follow. B2, are there, is there a soda? No, there isn't a show. A1, are there any eggs? Yes, there are a few. Here you are. Practicing the grammar and vocabulary in a game like this reinforces and extends student learning in a meaningful context. Also, ask yourself, what skills does the game practice? Does it practice listening, speaking, reading, or writing? Does it practice spelling? Does it practice pronunciation? In the example we just saw, students were practicing listening and speaking with exchanges that mirror real life communication. The game allows them to integrate skills in a natural conversation. Notice how the board is the image of a kitchen cupboard. So students are in the real life situation of looking for food in the kitchen.
A second important practice is to connect the games you choose to your students' learning styles. Let's look at some examples from teachers in different countries. Here is an example of a class in Mexico playing telephone. This auditory game helps students practice listening, speaking, and pronunciation, and creates a fun, friendly way to practice vocabulary. What was the word? As you can see, the game gets students to stand up and move around. Games like this will appeal to your kinesthetic learners. In this game, in a classroom in South Korea, the teacher has learners use a fly swatter to hit the word they are pronouncing. This helps the teacher assess their pronunciation while students get a chance to get up and move around. Small libraries, little stations, drugstore, movie theater, public stations, food, blue toys, blue toys, blue toys, stations, supermarket, restaurants, hospital, post office, and museum. Most of the R World student book games include cutouts for students to cut out and play with. These will appeal to kinesthetic learners too. Visual learners will enjoy the games on the R World video. These games quiz learners on the vocabulary using fun photos and images. Melody. Kids are visual and love to draw and use an interactive whiteboard. Watch how engaged learners are playing Pictionary to check comprehension of vocabulary. By combining movement, pictures, and sounds, the IWB appeals to kinesthetic, visual, and auditory learners. Once you have chosen the right game to help students practice language, be sure to set your students up for success. This means you need to manage the games you bring to class. The most important point is to be sure that the instructions are very clear. This will ensure maximum fun and maximum practice with the language. Use native language when necessary to give instructions. Sometimes the explanation for the instructions is way above the level of your learners. In order to save time, it may be more efficient to quickly explain the rules of the game in the native language. Instruction for games are usually easier to demonstrate than to explain. After giving an explanation of the game, always model how to play the game correctly. Make sure you set a specific amount of time for the game. I would recommend spending no more than 5 to 10 minutes for a game with young learners. Don't play a game too long. Plan the amount of time you will devote to a game and stick to the plan. Experienced teachers know that students can get very excited with games and won't want to stop playing. Sometimes, setting a time limit means planning certain rules for the game. For example, when you play Pictionary as a whole class, you could tell students that only five students will get a chance to draw a vocabulary word. Then be sure you give different students a chance to draw the next time you play the game. The more often you play games in class, the more familiar students will be with the rules and instructions, and the easier it will be for you to manage. Then both you and your students will have success with games. Games are a developmentally appropriate approach to teaching young learners that keeps children active, social, and even entertained in the classroom. Well-chosen games present language in a meaningful context and motivate students to use English. 
Our world understands how to build on young learners' sense of fun and includes many language games to check comprehension, practice language, and assess learners' progress. Use the Our World games or be creative and find ways to incorporate your own language games to make your classroom a lively and motivating experience for all. This is our world. Everybody's got a song to sing. Each boy and girl. This is our world.